Okay, so we're going to take a look at some AP stats uh, free response questions from the AP exam. Uh, they release these questions online for your viewing. Um, so you can check out the answers, you can check out um, what would be, need to be done to get a f uh, full credit on a correct response, uh, half credit, single credit. These are uh, full credit responses that we're going to be doing. So this is 2011 exam number six, uh, and the question states, every year each student in a nationally representative sample is given tests in various subjects. Recently, a random sample of 9,600 12th graders from the United States were administered a multiple choice exam on history. Uh, one of the multiple choice questions is given below. So here, the uh, AP stats exam gives you the question uh, that these, all these students supposedly messed up on. Um, this piece of information here is actually somewhat useless to the question, so try to ignore um, the actual multiple choice question that is given and just move on to the statistics part. So it then says of the 9,600 students who are tested, only 28% answered the multiple choice question correctly. So we have N equals 9,600 students and P hat 28%, which is just 0.28. So our first question is A, let P be the proportion of all US students who would answer the, uh, who would answer the question correctly. So construct and interpret a 99% confidence interval for what P is. So first, we would need to uh, identify the correct inference procedure, which is a one sample Z interval for a population proportion P. And as we know, P is the proportion of all uh, 12th graders who would answer the question correctly. Uh, we need to check our conditions for inference. Uh, one, we need to make sure that the uh, sample is random. And two, we need to make sure that the sample is large enough. Um, we're given that the sample is random. In order to check that it's large enough, we need NP and N times one minus P, both to be uh, greater than 10. Uh, this is pretty simple. Um, we're gonna see this very easily here. So NP is uh, 2,688, that's 9,600 times 0.28, just NP, uh, clearly larger than 10. And N1 minus P is 9,600 times 0.72, also clearly larger than 10. So our conditions are all set. We can go ahead and construct this confidence interval. So the interval is pretty simple to construct. We're gonna have P hat plus or minus Z star times P hat one minus B all over N, the square root of that. Um, we're just gonna plug in our values uh, for N and P. And since we know that we're constructing a 99% confidence interval, our Z star is gonna be 2.576 and we can just carry out this calculation. So your confidence interval is going to be 0.28 plus or minus 2.576 times the square root of 0.28 times 0.72 all over 9600. Um, you're going to need your calculator to uh, find out what this interval is, but it's going to end up being 0.28 plus or minus 0.012. So your confidence interval, uh, your lower bound is gonna be 0.28 minus 0 0.012 and your upper bound is gonna be 0.28 plus 0 0.012.
So this is your final answer for part A. Uh, we are 99, we can say with 99% confidence that the proportion of all U.S. students who would answer the question correctly is between 0.268 and 0.292 or between 26.8 and 29.2%. Uh, so now we're going to move on to part B. Part B provides a, uh, excuse me, um, let me just read off uh, the directions for part B as well. So we're going to assume the students who know the correct answer have a 100% chance of answering the question correctly, which makes sense. They know the answer. They're going to answer correctly. Uh, the students who don't know the correct answer guess randomly from one of the four options. So they have a one in four chance of getting the question correct. And uh, we're going to let K represent the proportion of all United States 12th, grade, 12th graders who actually do know the correct answer. We're then given a tree diagram possible outcomes um, for a randomly selected 12th grader uh, from the entire population. And uh, we're going to construct this tree diagram. Uh, so the diagram we're given uh, gives the, the top half of the tree diagram. Uh, student who knows the correct answer, probability K. Uh, students, uh, and then we have conditions. Student uh, answer is correct. Well, if they know the correct answer and the answer is correct, that's going to be a probability of 1 answer is incorrect, that's going to be zero. So we have a total probability of k and then zero. We need to fill in the bottom half of this table. So if they know the correct answer, and that's k, uh, guesses at random is just going to be 1 minus k. So that these add up to 1. So we have guessing at random, and the answer is correct. Well, we already said that they have a 1 uh, one fourth chance of answering correctly. And uh, answer is incorrect. Well, there's three out of four incorrect answers, so that probability is three out of four. And then to find the probability over here on the right side, we just need to multiply one minus k in a fourth and one minus k in three fourths. So we finished filling in the tree diagram. Um, so the top half, or excuse me, the bottom half is going to say that the chances of a student guessing at random and being correct is one fourth minus one fourth k, and the chances of them guessing at random and being incorrect are three fourths minus three fourths k. We filled out this confidence. Uh, excuse me. We filled out the tree diagram, and now we're going to move on to part C and D, which uh, actually both require a little bit of help from parts A and B. So the question in part C asks us, based on the tree diagram, express the probability in terms of K that a randomly selected student uh, would answer the question correctly. So we want the probability that the question is going to be correct from the entire population. Well, we know that uh, this is just going to be the probability that the student knows and answers correctly and the probability that the student doesn't know and still answers correctly. So we need to add a couple probabilities from our tree diagram. I'm just going to write them down here to remind you. So the probability that a random student, a randomly selected student from the entire population is correct is the probability that a student knows the answer and is correct plus the probability that a student guesses and is correct. We know that this top probability is k. Uh, we know that the bottom probability from our previous problem is 1 over 4 minus uh, 1 over 4k. So we're going to write this out.
So our answer for this problem, once we add those together, is just going to be 1 plus 3k over 4. Um, if you split it up, you can see that we have 1 fourth minus 1 fourth k plus a k, which gives you 3, 3 fourths k. If we split this up, it's 1 fourth plus 3 fourths k. So now we're going to go to uh, the last part of our problem here. Um, it asks us to use the interval from A and the answer from C uh, in order to calculate and interpret a 99% confidence interval for K, which is the proportion of all 12th graders who actually know the answer. Um, and we need to assume here that our conditions are checked. Um, the problem states this. So this is going to be pretty simple. Actually, it seems uh, like it might be a little complicated. All we need to do is uh, rewrite this confidence interval from part A. So uh, I'm going to rewrite this just to remind you. Um, and this is going to be the 99% uh, confidence interval for a randomly selected student getting the answer correct. So we actually don't need to uh, do any complicated uh, confidence interval calculations here. We're just going to set the probability that we achieved here in C equal to the lower and upper bounds um, to find out what K is. I'm going to uh, simplify um, how I wrote out K just to make it a little more noticeable. So the lower bound is 0.268, we're going to have 0.25 plus 0.75k equal 0.268. And then we have our upper bound uh, 0.25 plus 0.75k equals 0.292. Uh, you might need your calculator just to do a quick calculation here. Figure out what k is, all you need to do is subtract 0.25 from each side of each equation, and then obviously divide by 0.75 to find out what k is. So in the top, we're going to have 0.024, k equals 0 0.024, and on the bottom, we're going to have k equals 0 0.056. So we've calculated uh, two values of k, the lower and upper bound of our 99% confidence interval from part A. We used to figure out what the lower and upper bound um, of our 99% confidence interval for k is going to be in this problem. Here's our lower bound, here's our upper bound. And what this last answer means is that we are ni with 99% confidence, we can say that we believe um, the uh, proportion of all students who actually know the answer is between 0 0.024 or 2.4% and 0 0.056 and 5 or 5.6%. We're all set.